This is a depreciation of fixed assets topic. Um, what we're doing here for this, uh, this is the question here on, on the right side. Um, what I have here on the left is a table, and this is something you have to draw into your copy. Um, this is only going to fit if you uh, go landscape. So you turn your top copy to the side. Uh, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different columns. Um, so you have to divide your copy um, into ten columns to the side. Maybe use a ruler just to be some way exact so it's not messy. And you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows. Um, very start of this question is drawing out the question so that takes a little bit of time you have 10 uh, columns uh, so you turn your copy to the side uh, you measure out to fit in 10 columns uh, and then you're going to have loads of room to fit these nine rows um, once you've that done you can label them so i put in the labels here already just to show you that's going to take some bit of time but as you uh, get used to it it gets quite quick um, Basically, for this question, we're looking at vehicles. Um, we're looking at vehicles and we're looking at how much the, the vehicles depreciate. Um, and then if we sold the vehicle, how much profit or loss we made on that vehicle. Um, and to do that, we have this table here and we take it step by step from the first year to the last year and then finding our total. Um, so when we're doing this out, this is our first vehicle, vehicle number one. I have vehicle number two down here. I'll explain fridge in a second. Um, and I vehicle number three. They're the three vehicles that they tell you at the start. However, when you look through the question, you'll find that um, vehicle number one is crashed and traded in against a new vehicle. So we'll call that vehicle number four. And then I have vehicle number one was traded in against a new vehicle. So again, another new vehicle, we'll call that vehicle number five. Um, the question always has something extra. And down here, we see it here. Vehicle number one was uh, had a refrigerated unit uh, fitted back in 2013, so uh, quite early on. So that's why I fitted vehicle number one had a refrigeration unit. So I've just put fridge below vehicle number one. All you need to concern you with at the, uh, at the start is you know copy sideways, ten columns, nine rows, um, and then when we're filling in what they are, we have our vehicle number one. I look through the question and see that that vehicle had a fridge. So I just put fridge below it to keep them together. Then I have vehicle number two, vehicle number three. Uh, we bought a new vehicle here. So that one is vehicle number four. And then we bought a new vehicle here. So that becomes vehicle number five. That's how I draw it out of the start. Uh, now, um, this is quite an easy question, to be honest. Once you get into the hang of it, it's uh, it's repetitive enough and it's, it's quite easy to get full marks in. Uh, first, column we have here is the cost figures and we're just going to basically put in the figures that they tell us so vehicle number one cost fifty thousand therefore when i do this out here i vehicle one down as fifty thousand uh the fridge cost twenty two thousand therefore i have filled in twenty two thousand here for the fridge vehicle number two cost sixty six thousand and vehicle number three cost seventy four thousand therefore i just plug in those figures there for uh, for those two. Um, that's the information they give us at the start. The goal of this question is to find out how much depreciation we have uh, and then what's left at the end in terms of how much the vehicles are valued. So for most of this question, we're just trying to find the depreciation for a year. So I'm going to start with vehicle number one. We bought that back in 2012. Okay, we bought it for fifty thousand every single vehicle we have vehicle depreciates at 15 percent of cost per annum we see that up here so vehicles depreciate at 15 percent of cost per annum so i know that my vehicle number one which cost fifty thousand depreciates at 15 percent per year how do i find the depreciation for 2012 as you go on in time, you may not need to do out this box down here, but for now we're only learning the topic, so I put it in. So uh, what we have here is for vehicle number one in 2012, it cost 50,000, 15% 15 depreciation per year. Therefore, the depreciation in 2012 is 7,500.
and I have that filled in there. 2013, it's the same. How do I know it's the same? Well, they haven't told us anything happened to this vehicle um, up until uh, down here when they're talking about 2017. All we're concerned about at the start of this question is working down to this point up to 2016 because the question doesn't really start until 2016. Uh, we start the question 2016. So basically, all we're doing here from 2012, 13, 14, and 15 is just kind of filling in what would have happened before the question started. So we bought this back in 2012, cost uh, 50,000, and it depreciates 7,500, and it's going to depreciate by 7,500 every year because nothing happened to that vehicle. Um, I'm just going to get this. Out here, might have to do it individually. So um, that's that done out for each year. So 7,500 for 2012, 13, 14, and 15. And I can see this here, I have 7,500 each year. So if I total all that up here, it's going to total to 30,000. So therefore, my figure here for my total depreciation at the beginning of 2016 is 30,000. Uh, quite simply, you're just going to repeat that for all of your vehicles until you get to this point. And that's all we'll look at for today. Uh, we'll look at the fridge next, because the fridge has got to do with the refrigerated unit is part of vehicle number one. Uh, that was fitted uh, back in 2013 at the beginning of the year. The dates are important. Cost 22,000, okay? So we're looking at the fridge. Its cost was 22,000. So in 2013, getting rid of this here. Back in 2013, if I'm to calculate the depreciation, I will say 22,000, which is its cost multiplied by its depreciation rate. And the depreciation rate for the fridge is down here. The refrigeration unit was depreciated at the rate of 30% of cost for each of the first two years. So in 2013, it was at 30%, and in 2014, it was 30%. And thereafter, at the rate of 15%. So after that, it was only 15%. Uh, 2013 is 30% depreciation. So 22,000 is my cost for the fridge. 30% depreciation is 6,600. Again, for 2014, that's my second year here. 2014, again, it's the first two years. So this year is also 30% depreciation. Again, it's the same thing. My cost, 22,000 multiplied by 30%. And so I have my depreciation for the first two years. My depreciation for year two, again, is going to be 6,600. So that's only taking us up to 2014, but I can fill this in here. We can see that uh, it's 6,600 for the first two years. Uh, and for the third year, it's thereafter, it's 15%. So it's going to be 22,000 by 15%. Uh, so I have that filled out here. That's obviously going to be half of the figure above. So it's going to be 3,300. So my depreciation at the end, if I total all that up, it totals to 15,500. And that's what we're looking at here. So 3,300 is going to be 2015. And then if I add the three of those up, my total is 16,500. The vehicle number two. Vehicle number two was purchased in the on the 1st of March 2013 so this is going to be a little different because we did not have it for the full year um, we're going to need to take it kind of step by step so in 2013 here we can see that we purchased this vehicle um, the 1st of March so therefore I had it for all of March April May June July August September October November and December I did not have it for the first two months so when I'm going to calculate this here I'll just show you here. All we're looking at again is the cost, 66,000. It's a, a vehicle, so it's at 15%, but I only have it for 10 months. 
I did not have it for January and February of 2013. So I multiplied by 10 divided by 12 because I did not have it for the full year. So that's going to give me 8,250. Yeah, 8, so 8,250 is my 2013 depreciation for my vehicle number two. So 2013, vehicle number two, I can fill that in here to be 8,250. Uh, 2014, I had it for all of 2014. So if I had it for all of 2014 here, it's going to be 66,000 multiplied by 15%. I'm going to just to speed this up. I'm going to get rid of the fills here. I'll kind of speed this up a bit more. So, again, while we're looking at here for vehicle number two, so vehicle number two for the first year we only had it for 10 months, but for the second year we'd have had it for the full year. And for the third year, 2015, again we would have had it for the full year. So 66,000 by 15% is 9,900. And 66,000 by 15% is 9,900. So for 14 and 15, I had it for the full year. Therefore, I can fill these figures in here. And back in the end, uh, the beginning of 2016, it's just my total. I add up the three years and I find it's 28,050. I've just uh, included that total down here as well. 28,050. Vehicle number two. Finally, vehicle number three. So vehicle number three I bought at the 1st of October 2014. Therefore, I had it for all of October. Because I bought it in the 1st of the 10th, 2000, uh, 1st of the 10th 2014, I had it for three months then, uh, October, November, and December. So for again, for vehicle number three, for the first year, I'm looking at the same thing. 74,000 is the cost, 15% is depreciation, and I had it for three months out of the 12. 2,775. What about 2015? So I'll just fill this in here. This is uh, just to show you there is nothing in 2012 and nothing in 2014, or 12 and, and 13, sorry, because we didn't have it then. Uh, but for 2014, it's uh, 2,775. 2015 is the final year we have to look at here. So for 2015, we had it for a full year. 74,000 by 15% is 11,100. So it's 11,100 here for 2015. And if I add it all up, for two years, it gets me 13,875. So what have I done? Turn your copy sideways, 10 columns, nine rows. These are the different vehicles I've put in the fridge here below one because it tells us that the fridge is attached, it's fitted into vehicle number one. I then look and find the depreciation for each year. How do I do that? Well, I start for the cost, multiply by the depreciation rate, and that gets me the depreciation. If I didn't have it for a full year, like what happened here and here, then I need to look at the months. I had it for 10 months for vehicle number two, and for vehicle number three, I had it for October, November, December, I had it for three months. The fridge was a little different because it had 30% for the first two years, and then I went back to 15%. But this is extremely repetitive, and all we've done so far is we found the depreciation for each of these vehicles before the question started. And now I can find, okay, so the total depreciation before the question even starts, the total depreciation is 88,425. And this is actually a lot of the work uh, for the question. You're looking at more than half the work is already done uh, because you only have 2016 and 17 uh, left to do. Um, the only other thing we'll do now here, only other thing I've done is I've calculated the total cost at the first of the first 2016 and I've calculated the total depreciation. I'm going to leave a little room here because I still have um, I still have more to call my vehicle number four and my vehicle number five. Um, but as of now here I have my figures that I've just put in for each year I've totaled them up here, and then I put the very much total here at the bottom for all four. Um, and I've just totaled up the costs here. And that's how we start a depreciation question.